please stand by. We're about to begin. Good day and welcome to the Promoting Child Wellbeing and Permanency Through Healthy Relationships conference call. Today's conference is being recorded. At this time, I would like to turn the conference over to Rebecca Fairchild. Please go ahead, ma'am. Thank you so much and hello, everyone. Um, quickly, before we get started, if you are watching in a group, could you please just let us know how many people are sitting with you um, in, the question, in the box that is on the right side of your screen? I'm going to give people a couple seconds to put some information in, and then we'll get started. All right. Um, I'd like to welcome you to the National Resource Center for Healthy Marriage and Families webinar entitled Promoting Child Well-Being in Permanency Through Healthy Relationships. My name is Rebecca Fairchild and I am part of the Resource Center team. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a couple of items, um, to housekeeping items before we go. Today's audio is being broadcast through your computer speakers. Make sure that the volume for your computer speakers is turned up so that you can hear the presentation. New featured resources that will be discussed in today's webinar are available for you to download from the pod in the top right corner of your screen, designated with the words file. Please click the name of the file you wish to view, then, down, then the download button to open and save a copy to your resource to your computer. The resources and videos shown today will also be available on our website, healthymarriageandfamilies.org. To visit our website, click the link in the middle pod to your, on your right designated with the words web links. We will be taking questions at the end of the presentation, but we encourage you to submit any questions you have throughout the duration of the webinar. To do this, find the question and answer pod designated with the letters Q and A in the right bottom portion of your screen. Type your question in the open field at the bottom and then click the send question button or hit enter. A recording of this presentation, the slides, a transcript, and a question and answer document will be posted to the past events archive on our website, healthymarriageandfamilies.org, under the training, technical assistance, and events tab. The objectives of today's webinar are to in introduce the Children's Bureau Healthy Relationship and Marriage Education Training Project and to discuss its outcomes and interests. We will also identify research-based resources and skill building tools available to support the integration of relationship education into various service delivery systems. Today's webinar will be moderated by our Resource Center staff members, Ted Futris, Training and Technical Assistance, the National Resource Center, and Deborah Gilmore, Operations Manager with the National Resource Center. So with that, I'd like to turn the call over to Ted here at the National Resource Center for Healthy Marriage and Families. Ted? Thank you, Rebecca. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us uh, this afternoon for this uh, wonderful webinar. Um, we are very fortunate to have uh, as guest speakers with us uh, Dr. David Schramm from the um, University of Missouri, who is the project lead for the Healthy Relationship and Marriage Education Training Project. Uh, he'll share a little bit with us uh, about uh, the project and, and what it's done, as well as uh, Sue Tu uh, Warming, uh, who is a consultant with uh, two consulting in Iowa, uh, a uh, training participant uh, who also has been supporting efforts in her state, um, uh, encouraging others to attend the training. She'll share a little bit about uh, what they have been doing in Iowa. And Amanda Ratliff, um, uh, program coordinator with Parents as Teachers um, in North Carolina, uh, also a, a participant. She'll share with us a little bit about her experience uh, with the training. And before we get started with their presentations, I wanted to give you a brief uh, overview and description of the, uh, the National Resource Center for Healthy Marriage and Families, particularly for those of you who might be joining uh, the webinar for the first time uh, and uh, learning, more, uh, learning about it for the first time. Uh, the mission of the Resource Center is, is about connecting healthy marriage, education skills, and safety net services 
um, uh, as, as an integrated approach to strengthening families. Families um, uh, that uh, you serve uh, require a lot of services, uh, targeted services, and many times uh, services directed towards strengthening couple relationships um, are, are, are often overlooked, but often very critical to uh, sustaining um, positive change and helping families. So the Resource Center is, is, a, uh, is there available for uh, stakeholders to, um, to engage, to identify resources they could use to prepare them to do this work. And by stakeholders, um, you know, you'll hear stakeholders, you'll hear safety net service providers, and, and by that, what we refer to are federal, state, tribal, and local government agencies, uh, such as uh, those that are listed here in the diagram, which include child support, Head Start, temporary assistance for needy families, as well as workforce investment uh, boards and community partners. Uh, Safety net providers also include child welfare prof professionals um, who were uh, particularly those who were targeted as part of the, uh, the Healthy Relationship and Marriage Education Training Project. Um, healthy marriage education specifically uh, really focuses on teaching those interpersonal skills such as communication, conflict resolution, uh, along with other critical skills such as parenting and financial literacy. So the goal of the Resource Center is really to, to help safety net service providers understand what healthy marriage relationship education is, provide resources to develop the competencies to teach those skills to the clients that you work with. So with, with that brief overview of the Resource Center, I'm now going to turn it over to Dr. Dave Schramm, who's going to share a little bit more about what the um, Healthy Relationship Marriage Education Training Project was all about. Dave? Hey, thanks, Ted. Hi, everybody. My name is Dave Schramm, and I'm an Associate Professor and State Extension Specialist in the Department of Human Development and Family Studies here at the University of Missouri. I'm also the the lead on the Healthy Relationship and Marriage Education Training Project um, funded by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services through the, the Children's Bureau. And I'm happy to be a part of the webinar and, and share some information about the Healthy Relationship and Marriage Education Training uh, Project, or HERMIT, we call it for short, and the impact the project has had on the integration of healthy marriage and relationship education into uh, child welfare services. Uh, to get a little background, about five, uh, let's see, are we having trouble on the, okay, looks like we're going to take a quiz here, a little, a little pop quiz I'll begin with. Approximately how many children in the United States were in foster care in 2012? And I'll give you a few seconds to select an answer there on your screen. See the numbers moving. Give you a few more. Seconds. Okay. Good. Yeah. According to one government source, at the Adoption and Foster Care Analysis Reporting System, there were nearly 400,000 children in foster care as of uh, September 30th, 2012. So. And, and there, there's a body of research indicating that healthy marriage and relationship education can benefit the parents and caregivers of these children. Uh, and this includes benefits to single parents, co-parents, married parents, grandparents, uh, relatives, and other foster parent caretakers uh, in addition to, to youth. So to give you a little bit of background on the, the project, it was about five years ago our extension team, which I'll describe on the next slide was awarded a five-year cooperative agreement with the Children's Bureau under the Administration for Children and Families. And our task was to review several decades of research in relationship marriage education programs, essentially taking the best of the best from these programs and then developing, uh, disseminating, and evaluating this relationship and marriage education uh, curriculum as a way to share skills and resources and tools to support child welfare professionals and social workers in building protective factors in families which may help prevent future child welfare involvement. Ultimately, the big picture and one of the primary goals of the Children's Bureau is to improve the safety, permanency, and well-being of children. And our method of doing that was by giving child welfare professionals 
the education and the tools so they could help parents and caregivers develop the knowledge and the skills they needed to form and maintain healthy couple and co-parenting relationships. So you can see that the spillover effect, that spillover effect on your screen from couples to parents to children, and this concept, it really made sense for the professionals and the parents that, that we trained. Our, the project was developed with the help of a, a partnership between Extension at the University of Missouri in addition to the North Carolina State University, the University of Georgia, Iowa State University, and the University of, of Arkansas. We, we pulled and really adapted resources and information from the National Extension Relationship and Marriage Education Network, or NERMAN for, for short. And I should know that there was only one of these cooperative agreements awarded across the nation, and so our team felt very fortunate uh, to receive this award to work together on this unique project. So the Hermit curriculum consists of seven modules represented by the seven icons on the screen. And I, I need to note up front that the training reinforces a, a do-no-harm approach and emphasizes that safety in relationships really is a priority. In fact, relationship and marriage education is, is not recommended if there's uh, domestic violence that can actually make things go, go worse. So the seven modules came from the core components featured in the National Extension Relationship and Marriage Education model, which are strengths-based, they're process-oriented elements that build relationship quality. And now you'll notice the four on the top row are things the individual controls and does for the relationship, while the three on the bottom row are things the couple does together for the relationship. And I'll provide a very brief overview of these concepts to give you a basic idea of, of what they entail. So we start with care for self, which stresses the fact that if a person is taking care of themselves and adding, uh, you know, attending to their own physical, uh, mental, and emotional well-being, it fosters healthier couple and marital relationships. Next is choose, which emphasizes that strong, healthy, long-lasting relationships don't just happen by chance, but instead through deliberate and conscientious de decisions to be committed, uh, intentional, proactive, it's strengths-focused. The focus is not only on the importance of choosing a partner, but then also choosing to stay committed and invested throughout the relationship. The concept of no has to do with developing intimate knowledge of each other's personal and relational needs, interests, feelings, and expectations. Uh, this concept also focuses on, on knowing before going into a relationship for those who are single, as well as knowing as you're going throughout the relationship for those who are already in a relationship. Things, things change over time. The concept of care addresses the importance of investing in the relationship, so expressing kindness, attempting to understand and demonstrate respect, and making time to be available and open to one's partner. It's all those little things that add up that show your partner that, that you love them. Uh, with the concept of share down below, the main idea is spending meaningful time together and fostering a, a shared sense of couple identity uh, in order to sustain a close, enduring friendship based on, on trust and love. And then manage deals with healthy ways and strategies to manage differences, uh, contain stress responses, soothing their partner, listening attentively, making efforts to understand their, their partner's point of view. Uh, we also emphasize emotional and physical safety as well in manage. And finally, the concept of connect emphasizes the fact that the connections couples develop with their family, their peers, uh, in the community offer a source of meaning, of, of, of purpose and support that influence the health of the couple relationship. So, so that's a quick overview of, of basically a six and a half hour day in, in a nutshell of these, these guiding concepts. I'll give you a little taste of, of some of the resources, the tools, and the things that we've developed. We, we learned from some focus groups early on that the child welfare professionals didn't have the time or the ability to get into deep discussions regarding relationships and go through uh, quote-unquote lessons in a specific order, as is often the case with, with traditional marriage and relationship education. What they wanted was something simple 
and brief, yet it had to be meaningful, that they could review with a parent or a couple, uh, and in fact, leave with them this little tool. So we developed simple tools based on the principles taught in this training. So these tools are, are basically a one-sided handout that teaches a principle and then asks the parent to do something or write something or think about something. For, for example, you'll see that one on top in the talking about money tool you see there, it first mentions the fact that many couples have disagreements about money, and then it discusses expectations, and then invites them to discuss things that they want and differentiate that from things that they, they need, and then ask them to set goals, simple steps, really, to reach their, their financial goal. Other tools are similar in that they, they teach a principle that invite the participant or couple to check boxes or fill in some information or brainstorm answers together. Uh, on the other side of these tools, on the physical tools, are instructions for the child welfare professional to read and study beforehand before they visit this, this individual or couple. So they have an understanding about the purpose of the tool and how to use it, how to sit down with the individual or couple and discuss it with them. So the idea is for them to make copies of, of only the, the tool side of the handout and give to those they work with if they think it might be helpful for, for them. The bigger idea here is that we want the child welfare professionals and those who use this to, to pick and choose the tools that meet the needs of the parents, not feeling like they have to go in and here's a specific order, okay, here's lesson one, we sit down, we go through this long, lengthy um, principle, but it's more if they, they see a need, they're visiting with a couple, and they say, ah, I remember a tool that may be helpful, and they can literally pull into their bag or come back next time and give them a tool. You also see the relationship wheel that we created. It's about you know, eight or nine inches um, around, and this wheel provides a, a bullet point summary of each of the seven concepts. So it's front and back, and then you can see the, the principles by rotating the wheel so another tool that the child welfare professionals have said is very helpful. Um, some of them have actually given them to um, the couples, the individuals, the parents that they, that they work with, and they found that those to be uh, very helpful and always asking us actually for more of those. Uh, I need to, to mention that a key assumption here is that the information is intended to help people who want to have a healthy relationship, okay? So they have to have that desire. If, if there are other serious issues such as mental health or you know, drugs or abuse, these tools shouldn't be used until those other issues are, are processed and, and worked through. To date, our Hermit team has trained uh, close to 1,400 professionals across the five states involved in the project over the past three years. The first two years were really um, developing the curriculum and refining it. The, the total training time, as I mentioned, is about six and a half hours, and they're led or co-led by state extension specialists. And our evaluation efforts, led by those at the University of, of Georgia, focused on uh, knowledge, uh, awareness of relationship, marriage education, resources, um, the abilities, you know, how comfortable they are um, delivering these types of resources. And um, this really is a pioneering effort when it comes to training child welfare professionals in relationship and marriage education, really the first time that these two fields have, have merged. So we wanted to better understand whether they feel this training is useful if it's needed, whether they'll use the tools with families they serve, and if, if they feel prepared to do so. Here's a, a snapshot of, of two rounds of trainings. Okay, So round three data are currently being collected. And these charts show only uh, three time points, but we actually have data at two weeks post-training and two months post-training as well. But this captures the significant differences from, from pre test a six-month uh, post-test, and most of the participants completed the pre-test online uh, through SurveyMonkey prior to arriving at the training. Then the post-test was completed at the end of the day of, of the training. They would fill that out, a hard copy. And then uh, the two-week, two two-month, and a six-month post-test they completed online through SurveyMonkey. So if you're a trainer like us, you love to see these, these differences across our outcomes of knowledge and ability, uh, comfort, and change in awareness of resources. In each area, you'll notice there's a pretty drastic change. And even more impressive to us is that the change is sustained over time. 
in addition to the numbers and the graphs, the feedback and comments from the participants, they tell a similar story. A participant from Iowa says, I've given the tools to my workers and they are using them with my families. One family in particular used to have domestics frequently, hasn't had one in about a two-month period. That is huge. It used to be weekly. Another from Georgia says, says this, in working with a couple who have been physically abusing their children, I've been able to make the connection with them about sharing and caring. Those are two of those little concepts we talked about earlier, and they have been open to that information. And finally, from here in Missouri, someone said, I used the wheel to show how they can be working together more as mother and father for their children. So in summary, we found that the child welfare professionals are not only open to receiving this relationship and marriage education training, but they love the training. And following trainings, they're ready to help strengthen couple and or co-parenting relationships. They also know um, when a situation warrants a referral. So that's a mouthful. At this point, I think I'll turn the time over to Sue in Iowa. She can tell you more. And Sue, can you please check your mute function? We cannot hear you at this time. I apologize. Uh, again, this is Sue Tu Warming, and I am a consultant with the Child Well Provider Training Academy here in Iowa. The Child Well Provider Training Academy is funded through our Department of Human Services, and our function is to provide trainings to our contractors that work directly with our youth and our families. The contracts include in-home services as, far, as well as residential, shelter, our supervised department living, and our aftercare program. And the aftercare program here in Iowa functions specifically for our youth 18 to 21 that have aged out of foster care. We coordinate about 30 to 35 trainings a year. Um, those are live trainings. We also have online webinars and other resources to support our field. So how did the Healthy Relationship and Marriage Education Training come to Iowa? I was contacted by Anthony Santiago of the Iowa State University Extension, and he is the lead person here in Iowa. And Anthony and I met and we talked about the training goals of the Hermit, as well as what is the function and the focus for the department here in Iowa. And we found that the um, training goals really match up to the Iowa goals as far as safety, permanency, academic success, and of course, well-being. And so as the Child Work Provider Training Academy, our role became the one that would coordinate and help to market to the field. We work with the, the administrators and the agencies all the time, and we were a natural fit to help to coordinate all of this. The other thing that we obviously really liked about the overall approach was the holistic approach. As Dave just mentioned, it's strength-based. It really focuses on what's going on for the family and for us very much for our youth-centered approach as well. The other thing that was really drawn to this was the practical information, the tools and the resources, those things that can be used immediately with families. When working with agencies and providers here in Iowa, the one thing they always ask us all the time is give us practical applications that we can use tomorrow. They wanted something that they could use right away. And they didn't want to go Google themselves to find good activities. So working with Extension and especially with Iowa State Extension as much as I have, I knew that this would be research-based and a really good product coming out of the Extension world. So there was no concerns about moving forward with this. And as we did move forward, the participants were really um, happy, basically, with the information and the tools. And again, they were very useful in home visits for those that work directly with their families. But they also found that they were very effective with working with the older youth in care, those that were still in care and those that were in aftercare or the ones that were just recently aged out. Often they were finding that those older youth have never really experienced anybody having a good relationship, so they don't know what that really looks like. So there's been a lot of opportunity to work with those older teens. They really liked a lot about the whole framework as Dave just went through, those seven concepts and how that was a foundational framework that they really could use with the families and with the youth 
as they went to have their sessions with them. So the next step we had to talk about was really those strategies for success. How are we going to introduce this to Iowa? So the first thing, obviously, was we had to build the relationships. In Iowa, like in many states, there is a limited resources, and it's hard for folks to get to trainings. So administrators really want to know that the trainings are a good thing. So what I would do is I would take the three-ring binder, which is just an amazing resource guide itself, and I would take that to trainings, and I would take that to meetings, and I would show the folks this is what you're going to get, and to really create that relationship. The other thing that really was a good tool for us for success was once a participant actually attended a training, they were more, you know, they would like talk to everyone they knew about what a great resource it was and how the, the tools could be just pulled out and just used with everybody at any time. The next thing that we did for a strategy is we really followed up with our participants. We believe strongly that we don't want to do a one and done here in Iowa. And so through the training academy, we offered more of a blending approach. So once we do a live training, we do follow up with additional resources or information, something to remind them of the tool, as well as to give them more information. And that was really easy working with this program because of the ongoing webinars and the website um, through the National Resource Center, we've been able to just support mostly what we've done through what's already been sent to us from the organization that's doing the whole initiative. The other thing that recently was added was the listserv, and we sent that out to all of our participants, and I think we only had a few people opt out to not participate, so they've all joined the listserv so they can get updates and more information. And one of the reasons we feel this is so important is because of the communication with participants needs to be an ongoing thing. So many times we've all gone to those great trainings and we hear some really good information, but then we get back to the office and there's you know, 40 emails and 10 voicemails and a bunch of things going on and our day is already full the next day. So it's real easy to put these resources on the shelf and kind of forget about them. So this ongoing communications and follow-up was another strategy that we did to remind people of the tool and of the resources that they have available to them. One of the other things we wanted to do was to really find out what the participant feedback was. So we created a simple survey monkey for our participants here in Iowa, and we basically asked them four questions. What was the most useful? What have they integrated or applied of which concepts? Which concepts would they feel the most useful? And what changes have they seen since they've been using the information from this program? And basically, as far as the integration strategies, the main thing they just talked about is it gives them things to have, they call them conversation starters. Sometimes when they go out to talk to a family, they just have a conversation about how are things going. But with the tools in this, in this training, they can actually take, as Dave just mentioned in the last session, they can take things and they can share those so that they can have a conversation today and perhaps follow up at the next session with even more of an in-depth conversation about a specific topic. It also can be very much customized. So if a couple or a young person is really struggling with connecting or care for self, they can focus in on that and they can add resources that will go along with that to make it even more strong. As far as the most useful concepts, it was a pretty even all across the board. They said the overall framework is what's the most helpful concept, having seven different areas to choose from to work with the families and with the young people that they work with. And then when we talked about the using the tools, they basically just said it was a way to reinforce what they were talking about, and more importantly, to take things to a deeper level. Again, a lot of our young people haven't always had the best role models, and the ones that work with our youth that are in aftercare really talk about how important it is to be able to, for them to know what a healthy relationship looks like. The last thing I want to share with you is just a couple things that our participants gave us as feedback. One individual put, I am better able to identify what areas couples need to work on. 
And again, that goes back to having the seven different components to choose from and to really be able to individualize things. Another person wrote, one client is becoming more thoughtful about getting herself into relationships, and we are able to discuss if her relationships are healthy or unhealthy. And again, this was one of our aftercare advocates, and she was working with a 20-year-old that just had really never had good positive relationships. And just being able to have that conversation instead of saying, you know, you're making bad choices, to really help that teenager, that young adult, to learn and to figure things out for themselves. Overall, here in Iowa, the Healthy Relationship and Marriage Education Training has been well received and embraced by all of those who have participated. In a field where staff have multiple demands on them at all times, one staff said that she said she felt that she was more calm and comfortable with interacting with families. And that's what we really want with our child well professionals, to have the tools and the resources to be comfortable, calm, and prepared to support our family and youth during these challenging times. And with that, I am going to turn this over to Amanda. Hi, I'm Amanda Ratliff, and I coordinate a Parents as Teachers program in North Carolina that serves families with children ages 0 to 5. And basically what Parents as Teachers is, it's a family strengthening program that helps the family get the child ready to go to school. Um, and several of the families that we serve in the area are involved in the child welfare system. And I've been doing coordinating the program for 11 years, and I normally meet one-on-one -on -one with families through home visits, so I'm coming from a service provider perspective. I participated in a healthy relationship and marriage education training in August of 2012 um, last year here in North Carolina. The training helped in, in many different ways with the, with the program. It helped a lot with the resources that are important to the work I do with, with children and families. And a lot of times we don't consider healthy, child, healthy relationship development with the families because we're so focused on child development. So it really made me stop and think um, about looking at healthy, the healthy relationships of the families we serve and if that's something we needed to incorporate in the program when the family, and if the family expresses interest in this. Um, we've always said that if in the program that it, in parents as teachers that if you want to meet the needs of the children, you also have to meet the needs of the family. Um, so we started really looking at the tools once I came back from the training and to figure out a way that we could incorporate it into the program. My population that I serve is a very low literacy population that's mainly Latino. And it's been very challenging because sometimes the, to, to adapt the tools because sometimes the handouts are very word heavy. Um, with a lot of my Latina families, their basic education level is about an elementary education level. Um, so it's been challenging at times to adapt those tools to the population I'm serving um, due to those factors. Slowly but surely, we began working on adapting the tools. Um, I don't usually give the families a lot of resources with a lot of words on it, but the relationship wheel has been the most helpful. It gives a visual for the families because the more concrete I can make it, the better off they can understand it and they can utilize the information in it. So a lot of times I usually read out the key concept, concepts to our lower, lower literacy families. And I, I also use the Love Maps tool a lot. That is a tool that has about 20 questions on it, um, things that what's your favorite hobby, what's your favorite food, things like that, so that they can really start thinking about their relationships and. And, and their family well-being. Um, I normally, when I'm working with a family, I normally talk through the tools with them orally to help them complete them instead of doing it on paper. I try to avoid writing down on paper as much as possible because that can be intimidating to the families. And since I work with a lot of Latina families, I also um, can translate the tools into them, um, put tools into Spanish for them during my conversations with them. Um, I mainly, once I started looking at the tools, I mainly did a trial and error with the resources and tools. Sometimes some of it, <coughs> excuse me, some of it worked with the families and some of it did not. Um, but I just had to get in there and get my feet wet with it. 
So I had to spend some time getting to know the tools, and some of them I just jumped right in and used them right away. Um, because of the setup of, of the program, there's not a lot direct a lot of direct support that is needed. So my supervisors are not supportive, but they're also not unsupportive. So the families I serve have been very supportive and receptive to the information. And I think a lot in parents as teachers especially, we, we get so focused on the needs of the children that we don't really focus on the needs of the parents because we're so busy trying to get them ready to go up to school. Um, most of the couples I work with currently are not married, so they're in co-parenting relationships. And integrating the healthy marriage and relationship education into the program has helped the parents to focus a little bit more on themselves and their health and well-being so that they can be better parents. And uh, we can preserve those protective factors in the family as well. Um, most of the parents are very focused on the children and trying to be the best parent they can be. But uh, several of the tools have helped them realize that their well-being, including their relationship, is important for the well-being of their children, and, they can, and this can ultimately help them be a better parent and their child benefits. The Latino families, especially in my experience, are so focused on their children. We try to encourage healthy relationships as well for the well-being of, of their children. And one, one of the concrete examples I can give is of a family that um, they're young parents and they were just newly married. And they have one child, and the mom is expecting, expecting another child. And I don't get to work with a lot of fathers during the home visits, but with this family, I get to see the father of the child from time to time. Um, again, they were very young parents. Um, they were very young when they became parents. And over time, I've been actually able to watch the father grow up. And we've, during one of the home visits uh, with the couple, we had been talking about them spending time together. and the mother and father both expressed a lot of interest in, in this topic and so I was able to later on the, on the home visit bring back some tools for them and I used I started to use the wheel to talk about the key healthy relationship concepts and we had talked about a situation during a home visit where the mother felt like her feelings weren't being val validated by her husband and he wasn't giving her the affection and respect that she felt that she needed and deserved and this she really talked a lot to me about how this was starting to affect her parenting of the child. So I used the wheel as a guide, and we talked about how they do express affection and appreciation toward each other. Then the father began to think about his actions and ultimately their children. And I also, one of the tools I used with this particular situation was the love maps, which was 20 questions. So I kind of made it into like the newlywed game on TV to where that they could, you know, they had a really good time playing it and they were, it was very concrete for them and they also learned from it. Um, and it also kept it very lighthearted for them. And so they really started thinking about remembering why they got into the relationship and why they ultimately decided to get married. But a lot of my families have a lot of different various obstacles in their ways, and they don't get to enjoy each other a lot. So they, they, this couple really got into talking about the different questions in Love Maps tool. And then after, after that session, there were several home visits later, the father started asking me questions about, you know, healthy relationship skills, and you could really see he was starting to take it to heart, and so was the mother. So over time, I was able to provide them with more tools. Um, so slowly, with a lot of time and persist persistence, we're, start we're incorporating more of the tools, and we've already seen some positive results in such a brief period of time. But now I'll turn it back over to Dave. Thank you. I, I just want to reiterate some points made earlier and share some uh, additional insights. At the beginning of the project, many of the child welfare professionals, including uh, many directors and administrators, they were reluctant, um, suspicious, maybe, and even hesitant about the whole idea of, of sharing relationship and marriage education with, with workers. For many, it was difficult to see the connection to their work of promoting uh, child well-being and, and permanency. However, we invited them to come as well and see what the training was like. And afterwards, they, they better understood the spillover effect I described earlier about, uh, you know, when things are not going well in the couple relationship, it often spills over into the parent-child relationship. And when children are abused and neglected, not always, but often it's in the context of an unhealthy couple relationship. And so we were able to hopefully clarify a few things. Some of them, you know, we had to make, make it 
clear up front that we're not turning them into into therapists. This isn't therapy. In fact, I'm not. I don't have any background in, in therapy. This is skills training. Uh, but they were hungry. They they wanted something more than uh, than Dr. Phil, you know, when they had, because they would encounter parents that had questions. So we, we received great feedback. Um, many of the, the child welfare professionals, they come up afterwards and said, you know, we've never received anything like this. And many felt that this should be included in their in their orientation, in their ongoing training. So we're excited about the work that has taken place these, these past five years, and uh, we look forward to partnering more with those in the child welfare field uh, in other states to, to strengthen families and, and promote healthy child outcomes. Now I'll transition to Deborah. Thanks, Dave, and thanks to our other presenters as well, to Amanda and Sue. I uh, am going to give you a sense of how we decided to use the Herbert curriculum and build on it. So the Resource Center took what the uh, Children's Bureau Project, the Hermit, as it's been called project, did. They took the, some of those lessons learned that you've heard about, and we also um, knew that there was a great demand um, for a variety of reasons. There's been a great demand for an online, uh, more and more online training. And so we tasked ourselves with taking the, the core curriculum the lessons learned, and that need for online training, and building it for not only child welfare workers, but the broad range of safety net service providers who uh, we're not only targeting, but who are really um, all out there building trust relationships with parents and different family members, and are, are becoming credible sources for not just the information that they went to school to um, provide parents with, but are becoming credible resources for all the needs of families. So <clears throat> um, we uh, took what was, we took what was um, in the curriculum, and it had those seven core principles that Dave went over, and we built it into seven um, chapters of an online training course. We're going to take you to the, our virtual training center now, and Rebecca is going to be my, my on-screen navigator to take you to the virtual training center. What I want to do is walk you through the virtual training center itself so that our training center um, becomes a resource to you and not um, an unknown scary thing that's out there. I know I like to see what a thing is and that it's not some strange light version that's suddenly going to ask you for money later or anything like that. Um, but you can see the resource itself and then how we um, took the Hermit curriculum and what that looks like on our virtual training center. So this is uh, what, what you have on your screen now is our, um, is our website and the virtual training center page under training, technical, systems, and events. It takes you to the training to the virtual training center um, under courses and tutorials. You'll see that we have two courses um, that we renamed Strong Relationships, Strong Families. The introduction is, uh, is specifically that, is an introduction um, to uh, the healthy relationship education concept what it is, what it is not. Some of you may have been on our webinars or have participated in our integration institutes. We really go more into that in, in those arenas. Um, and that course is about, uh, it takes you no more than an hour to go through if you yourself are looking for more information about what this really is. The second one, integrating healthy relationship education skills into social services, is what we adapted from the Hermit curriculum. So we're now going to take a look and register at the registration process. Um, if it is your first time registering for the course, you're going to be on the right side of this two-column page. And we're just going to take a peek at what's there by clicking on Create New Account. We're not really going to do that today. This is just to give you the, a sense of what we collect and what we ask you for. Um, the only strange thing I think that you will see is that as you're going through um, in box number two, you will see that um, the state does not follow city uh, and come in between city and country. Um, that is actually because the software that we use is not um, it does not come from the United States, so we had to add state as a separate thing. Why do we ask you for all of this? 
The reason is because we are a funded project and we want to make sure that we are serving our stakeholders, serving your needs, and, we, and one of the ways that we can do that is by um, collecting some basic demographic information about who you are. Um, we encourage you always, always to contact us in other ways and give us more um, substantive and content um, feedback on what you're seeing. But this is just one of the basic ways that we can collect information about um, who's finding our site at least useful enough to register for it. Um, so we're now going to go back to the, um, to, the, uh, to the login page and go ahead and log in. <laughs> um, so that's how to register. Uh, I actually, I apologize, Rebecca, I'm going to have you go back once again to the login page. The first thing I'm going to do is show you um, as a new uh, user, what you will see for the for the second course for the integrate uh, for the integrating um, relationship education into social services course. So you're going to log in as social worker one, and if you'll all give me a moment, I'm going to be silently letting Rebecca know what the password is. If you really, really want to collect your, your information, know who you are logging onto our site. Uh, right. And just to prove that we are live, we're going to do a couple of things wrong. Um, Okay, um, so as a new user, Rebecca, if you'll take a look in, uh, in the left navigation under Home, you'll see Courses. And when you first come in as a new user, that's the home page you'll see, and you'll, you're, you'll see under Courses, our course catalog. So right now we have two actual training courses. Those are the two that we mentioned on our website page that are both part of the Strong Family, Strong, uh, strong Relationships, Strong Families series. <coughs> and then you'll also see that we have one tutorial. You'll see more tutorials and more courses coming in the, uh, in the months ahead. Um, tutorials are, not, um, are, are based on our products and they walk you through those products. So another one that, uh, in addition to this one, um, that is a toolkit for stakeholders, in uh, addressing family violence prevention. The next one that you will see coming soon is a guide to our, our curriculum guide, and it will walk you through if you're looking for free or low-cost research-based curricula, uh, curriculum to use and to integrate. It will walk you through a process of choosing the, um, the best ones based on who you're serving and what kinds of information you want to provide. Um, coming back up to the courses I, I did neglect to mention but should, that um, these are built so that we are not a continuing education unit uh, course. Um, we're not an approved provider of continuing education units. You generally have to go back to your certifying agency or organization to receive those. But what we do provide is much information as, as uh, we found generally folks need for that. So you will, um, you will receive a course completion certificate when you complete one of our courses. You will find a course description, which we can show you in just a minute, um, where you'll find that. Um, that gives the basic information, the target audience who provided these and what the objectives were. And you will also, um, each of the courses will have some type of testing atmosphere that um, give, and you don't uh, receive your certificate until you've gotten an 80% passage, but we will get to that uh, in, more, in slightly more detail in just a moment as well. So Rebecca's just going to show you how you can choose strong the second course. And you would just enroll me for yourself. And then we would magically figure out where we, we went to. <laughs> Give me a second. I have to start sharing. Again, we just want you to know this is really live. And this is what you'll see when you enroll yourself. All of them uh, have that enroll me option um, because 
this same course software is designed for folks, uh, for teachers who can enroll students based on, um, based on you know, paid courses. Um, so the course description will be here when you enroll yourself into a course. We have also included for the Strong Relationship, Strong Families curriculum a print version, so you can print uh, our entire course curriculum from here. Uh, and you will also see in the pod on the right side of your screen um, that we have included this same course curriculum right there for you. So if you're interested right away in downloading it, feel free to um, download it straight from that pod in your screen. Uh, if Rebecca, do you, do you mind scrolling down just a little bit? And the, only thing, the other thing that I wanted to show you in this new person view <laughs> is that um, you have access as a new user to, to only Chapter 1. This is one of the ways that we um, built in for giving you CEU information, um, including that 80% passage rate. What we did um, to make sure that you took all seven courses and received an overall 80% rate but didn't have to take some horrible, onerous test at the very end of everything is we built in quizzes in each chapter. So um, <clears throat> when you get four out of five questions right, and you can take the quiz as many times as you need, but most people shouldn't have to take it more than once, um, we try to develop that balance of making sure you are um, answering with knowledge of the information with not making it some horrible uh, so so Socratic method you know, test. Um, so the passage of, the, of each quiz in each chapter unlocks the next chapter. And with that, I'm going to take maybe one more minute to bring you into the course itself, show you actually maybe two minutes. And Rebecca, if you, you can log back out. We're going to log in as me because I have access. I have passed the course already, and I have access to all the chapters. We're going to log. Great. <laughs> no. We're going to log into that second course again. I'm already enrolled, so you'll see it pop up right away. We're going to go to Chapter 2. And there are three things that we um, did in being mindful of this reaching a broader target audience, keeping all the things that were great about the original curriculum, um, <coughs> and making sure that we emphasized um, both the practical application and emphasized, as, as Dave said, that this is about people who want to have a healthy relationship. So um, we wanted to emphasize the fact that this is not a safety intervention. So there are, there are literal safety flags. Uh, cancel. <laughs> I don't know where I went last in this. Um, there are literal safety flags. So if we go to Chapter 2's areas worth knowing from the left side. They give you bits of information yeah. about um, that really emphasize that throughout and really um, make the point of what um, the healthy relationship skill or principle is and what and how it's really distinguishable from signs that there is a safety issue going on and something that is beyond just either reducing risk with a family or, or strengthening pr protective factors or making that family more resilient. Um, and then the practical tools that you've heard throughout, that application um, of, of activity worksheets, the love maps that, um, that Amanda um, has been using, all of those um, are in two places in here. So Rebecca's showing you where in the course itself it comes. And um, we did add a, the conversation starters that were mentioned as part of, part of the lessons learned. Um, you'll find that there are strength-based conversation starters for each of the seven chapters and seven core principles. You'll find them here in the chapters and what they will open up literally is a PDF. Again, it's something that you can download, view, print, download right away from it and we took it from the book so that if you have the written course curriculum, if you scroll down. You'll, um, you'll recognize it from the book as well. And I'm going to show you one other place where, where you can access these in case you come back to the course later. And then I'm going to uh, 
I'm mindful of the time. I want to make sure that we also have, give you time to answer, to ask questions of both the, the Hermit Project and um, anything to do with us as well. We do a little bit of wrap up. So Rebecca, you scroll back up to the top. For, and yep. And you move. In order to get you the proper resolution, as I understand it, and this is my novice understanding, um, we've, we've got some scrolling that you should not have to do um, when you're looking at it on your screen. So yes, yeah, so in this left-hand corner, you'll see a couple of uh, cute little tools. That is a listing Go ahead, click. Thanks. of um, all those tools and all of the chapters. So if you have thoughts about, you know, I really want to use uh, I really want to start a conversation with the family about um, getting uh, areas uh, of getting to know one another or about physical or mental health and its, and its impact on relationships. Um, then you can come here and you can take a look through and you can look at and, and it's a quick reference to find those activities or handouts um, or the conversation starters that are in each of the chapters. We're going to return from here to the, um, we're going to return from here to our main presentation. We're going to skip a couple of slides that we put in that were just in case um, we had uh, bigger technical difficulties that we could, then we could manage. And we're going to talk um, about the, uh, the resources, including the curriculum guide itself, that are in the right side of your screen. These are just a few of the more than 600 resources that we have either in our virtual library or, in the case of the curriculum, in our virtual training center. Um, <coughs> these ones are um, both, uh, we thought, you know, uh, particularly relevant to today's topic and to um, integrating, for example, child welfare and healthy marriage and relationship education, the research that talks about how it um, impacts folks who are, uh, are impacted by the child welfare system or are involved in it. And we know that that, you know, ranges from the children uh, who may be removed from a home or may simply be, or families who are involved but are intact um, and also involves older youth who are being, um, who are transitioning to independent living and need to be prepared for that. We have a wonderful video um, that we had hoped to be able to show you, again, had some technical difficulties with. Uh, we may be able to take a peek at it in the in our media gallery online. We'll see. Um, but there's a video that you'll see that talks about how, um, within less than five minutes, talks about how this um, how relationship education impacts uh, work in Head Start with children and families. Impacts um, and from from the stakeholders themselves talks about how it impacts. Um, folks entering into the workforce, staying in the workforce, and how those skills translate into workforce skills, and talks about um, the use in public health as well. Quick peek at our website, and you will see that those videos are here in our media gallery, and the one that I'm referring to is the one all the way on the left. And the um, other thing that we wanted to let you know is just the broad range of expertise that the Resource Center itself brings to you. Um, as you get into this process and, and get more and more excited about or involved in integrating relationship education into the skills and services and information resources that you provide to families, then uh, you can reach out to the Resource Center on a wide variety of areas. Our expertise with the with not only the core uh, team that works on it, but the um, folks who we can bring in and have already agreed to be experts for us. Um, our expertise ranges from the research behind marriage and relationship education <coughs> all the way to developing partnerships, using volunteers in your as one of your resources and how to manage that, um, and uh, engaging both the volunteers, engaging family members in the process, um, strategic planning and, and looking at both the tools and resources from Memorandum of Understanding that uh, we have samples of on our website to all the way from developing logic models and, and using those in order to um, <coughs> work out where it is that you really want to wind up and what outcomes you expect to see from it. Uh, we also have 
uh, expertise from child uh, protection and, and intimate partner violence through workforce development, anti-poverty, and, and you can see some of the others that are listed there. These are just a sampling of the wide range of experts that we have at our fingertips to be resources to you to help build that connection that Ted talked about between integrating relationship education and the safety net services that you are already traditionally providing. With that, I will turn it over to Becca. And thank you for helping me out. Thank you so much, Deborah. And every, I'd like to thank everybody for their presentations today. At this time, we would like to transition to our question and answer session. Um, we've had some questions submitted, but I'd like to encourage you um, to continue submitting questions um, that we would like to pose to the presenters. Um, once again, in order to submit a question, you can find the Q&A box on the bottom right side of the screen. Um, feel free to type in your question, and then you can either hit enter or you can um, select send question. So Deborah, I think that the first question that we have is um, directed towards you. Um, how many of the children in care are in kinship situations? Thank you, Rebecca. And one of the hats that I wear for the Resource Center is as its designated child and family safety expert. Um, <clears throat> so I took a look at the AFCAR's data, knowing that this question was coming, and I can tell you that there are about, um, there are almost 108,000 children who were designated as being in foster care and in a relative placement. So that captures all of the children in foster care placements. I just want to note that that does not capture all the children who may be informally placed. Um, so parents who um, may be actually involved with child welfare services, but their children have not been formally removed from them. Um, and they may be using a relative as a, a resource to them, a temporary resource. Uh, or they may or may not be involved in child welfare and they're using a relative as a temporary or a semi-permanent resource, those kids would not be um, involved in this or captured in the statistics. Thank you, Deborah. Um, I actually have another quick question for you. Um, is there a cost to doing the online course? There is no cost to any of our courses. It is a resource to you. It will always be a free resource to you. Thank you. Um, Dave, we have a question for you. What, um, what is the availability of training um, in your state, in my own state? Uh, you know, that's a good question. We're happy, uh, or I'm happy to, to take that to the team. Uh, the, the grant, uh, the, the corporate agreement with the Children's Bureau actually ends at the end of, of this month. But we're definitely open to, you know, talking, you know, offline if they want to email me and we can talk about the possibility of doing a, uh, a face-to-face -face training or a kind of a train-the-trainer option, which we haven't done with other states because we've been so so busy. But we're happy to to talk more about that and just you know discuss opportunities to to travel and do trainings. And Deborah, do you have something to add for that? Yes, I'll just add that the Resource Center also provides uh, what we've called integration institutes, and those integration institutes. Um, give the overview that is very similar to our introductory course that I showed online. Um, and we can also uh, at times, um, and so that's, I'm sorry, I should apologize, that, that is a one-day training that is brought to states. Um, we generally try to bring in, again, a range of stakeholders, um, and we work with the person who for that to uh, identify others who may be able to be supports and partners in the community with that, uh, that idea of holistic approaches. Um, <clears throat> so we do that and um, everyone leaves that with an action plan that, um, that we help them work out that uh, helps them, again, just strategically decide how to go about doing whatever their individualized goal is for um, integration. And we also can provide some um, tailored training and technical assistance to stakeholders. It's one of the reasons that we exist, so we uh, welcome um, contacting us either at our info at healthymarriageandfamilies.org uh, email or you will actually see on our website. If you're tooling around on there, you will see a training and technical assistance form under the training technical assistance and events um, tab. And also, uh, 
Another thing I would add uh, as well uh, to that question is, um, as Dave mentioned earlier in his presentation, um, the, the partnership uh, across the multiple states uh, with, uh, within Cooperative Extension. And so uh, I encourage uh, folks on the call, if this is something you're interested in, in addition to reaching out to the National Resource Center, uh, also encouraging you to reach out to your state's Cooperative Extension uh, specialist. Um, uh, every land-grant university within a state uh, has specialists who support family programming and, uh, and engaging in conversation with that specialist to see if this is a, um, a resource that uh, they have available or they could work with you to try to bring to your state as well. Thanks, everyone. Um, we have another question, and Sue, I believe this might be best um, directed towards you. Um, did you sense any um, feedback, or were there any barriers on integrating some of the resources, some of this stuff into services from maybe leadership or um, frontline staff? Did you, did you have any suggestions on kind of dealing with barriers on relationship education, into, uh, integrating relationship education? Here in Iowa, we didn't have really any barriers. The, the biggest barrier was just getting staff to trainings. I would say if, if there is barriers, I would, I would really just encourage them to show them the resources you're talking about, show them the online opportunities and information. I think that we did, once people looked at the information, then they really bought into it. Before that, there was a little resistance. I think the other thing is to make sure that people realize two things that have been talked about. One is that this isn't for domestic violence or anything. People have to want to have a healthy relationship. And the other thing is that we're not promoting marriage. That was one thing we heard a few times here in Iowa. Well, we're not promoting marriage. Well, no, that's not what this training's about. The training's about healthy relationships and if there is a marriage, to have a healthy marriage. So I think those were the biggest things, is just show them the resources and then show them the information online, too, would be helpful. Great. Thanks, Sue. Um, Amanda, did you have any barriers um, in implementing the program in North Carolina? Uh, no, no major barriers other than, um, yeah, travel <laughs> and budgeting and things like that, to get budgeting to get to the sites for the training. Great, thank you. Um, so we've had we've had one last question submitted, and Dave, I think this is probably best um, target um, for you. Can this be used with single parents who are not married? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. It's actually something that I wanted to clarify, so I'm glad it was asked. Um, many child welfare professionals, that was one of the concerns. They say, wow, most of the people I work with are single. How does this apply to them? And we say, absolutely, it applies to them. Most single parents will eventually uh, repartner. In fact, many of them repartner with multiple partners over time. And so what better time to get this information to folks than when they're single, and that will help them to make better, you know, healthier choices, again, that will impact their, their child. So absolutely for, for single parents, yes. And this is Sue, and I just want to just add um, absolutely the same kind of comment. Here in Iowa, most of our fam most of our young people that may be single parents, this has been probably the most effective with our young adults, and really learning what a healthy relationship is. So they they were in a relationship, they'll get back into relationships, and that has been probably the the biggest impact that we've seen is with the young adults. Great. Well, um, once again, I would like to thank our presenters and thank everybody for submitting great questions. Um, as a reminder, a recording of this presentation, the slides, a transcript, and a question and answer document will be posted on our website, healthymarriageandfamilies.org, under the Training, Technical Assistance, and Events tab. At the close of the meeting, a survey will appear in your web browser. If you could please take a moment to respond, this will help us improve our future webinars. Just as a reminder, all of your responses are anonymous, and this really helps us plan and make sure that we're providing webinars and information that is most useful to, um, to our stakeholders. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us, and have a great afternoon.
And that will conclude today's call. We thank you for your participation.